Hey, welcome to Men on Scandal. This is our weekly look of the TV show Scandal from a, a male point of view. And uh, we got the full house today, Mark Clark in, in New York City, and Troy Johnson in Washington, D.C. I'm Tony Scott in St. Louis. And last night's episode was called Baby Made a Mess. And we found out early on what the hell that was about. Man, I thought Halloween was over. <laughs> but we start out, man, that... Uh, Fitz and Olivia are talking on the phone, and she's making her demands. He wants to know about this hope thing. There's still hope. What is this hope thing? We, you, you told me we had hope. Where are we now? I haven't seen you. And she says, I want a full report on Jake before we talk about what hope is. He's trying to spend some time. <laughs> Olivia is down with hope as long as uh, Jake is fitting under all of the records, prerequisites of the Geneva Convention. So it's yeah. okay on two. Two completely different sh two ships in the night. Yep, yep. Mm. Now, un unbeknownst to Fitz, Melly's in the background listening. Mm. That's because you know, he this was. Is, and understand, this is Melly 2.0. This isn't the old Melly. This ain't even Smelly Melly. This is the new Melly. Yeah, but Fitz was at Smelly uh, Melly's old spot though on the porch. For that <laughs> fried chicken. <laughs> she had a fried chicken moment. A flashback. Wait a minute. What? To 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 fast forward a little bit, man. When she. When she called herself Chicken Fried Melly, I thought I was gonna just lose it, man. But that was that was later. Oh, in the you know, everybody had jokes. Everybody had jokes this episode. Yeah, Quinn is questioning Caitlin's father, and tells him why she uh, really died. And she says there, there, she grabbed a a folder that had nothing but pictures of Olivia Pope. Why is someone taking pictures of my boss? Is what Quinn asked this man, and he says you can't stop what's coming. I'm sorry, I can't help you. And then he has himself a lead sandwich <laughs> and kills himself. Well, the funny, part, it's the funny part. Of, yeah, he did. <laughs> he ain't gonna stop. The funny part to me was Quinn's uh, concern about a gun. You ain't scared of no gun. She was like, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> he just rolled in somebody's house, you know, sold, showed his chest back, and he pulled a gun. She was like, oh, a gun. Man. <laughs> Two yeah. weeks ago, you were, you were in the morgue uh, digging in some little girl's stomach, pulling out a key. Now you're all queasy about a suicide? Come on, man. That's the only part that I was like, ah, wait a minute. Yeah. She didn't play it cool, though, in somebody else's house for a minute. <laughs> yeah, we'll get, to, we'll get to that. Tell me about these pictures. <laughs> what the hell are you doing in my house? <laughs> yes. We'll talk about that later. Man, Senator Lewis McConnell is uh, on tape. A uh, crapping in his diaper. He has on a diaper. He doesn't have on like a depends thing. He has on like a baby diaper. He's got. I'm assuming he's a freak. He's got this fetish thing or something that we that we watch on on real sex every once in a while. So I've heard. Or or he just came from a Parliament concert. <laughs> <laughs> it, it could go either way. It either could way. go either way. So this tape of him in the diaper. Uh, with a woman and then crapping in his diaper, this tape gets out. So he has to resign his Senate seat. His replacement, uh, per the White House, with their endorsement, is Charles Putney, known as Chip. Now, we come to find out moments later that Chip is actually Abby's ex-husband. Mm. Okay, who in the room didn't know that, though? I mean, the president like act like he didn't. They all knew that. They knew. They. I mean, Cyrus clearly let it be known that I know who he is right before they went into the Oval Office, him and Abby. So they they knew. Mm -hmm. So yeah, what, yeah. What, was, what was the purpose of acting surprised? That, you know, the president saying, oh. Well, they, they, left like, her, they, they did leave her out, out of the loop again. When she they did leave her out of the loop again. Press conference, I guess, for real reason, because it was her ex-husband. Yeah, well, yeah. Out you, they did leave her out of the loop, and that that's kind of messed up, but the, their reason being what? Was this a way to shut her down because of what she had told Cyrus last week that she knew about the the new apartment and the new phone that he got for somebody? Was this, you know, she got she got kind of, you know, I, I you know, she kind of told him a little bit, you know, I you may think you got me, but I got you too. Was this a, her their way of neutralizing her or was that not even on the table? Hmm. So, so that's very uh your 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 female hormones are very responsive today. That's a Interesting take, because you're right. Like that would be a very uh, patriarchal thing to do to put her in her place, because yeah. the president had a little was a little salty. 
uh, Cyrus was a little salty. So yeah, why not? But I don't know if that <laughs> I don't know if that was part of it. But that was a, a great observation. Uh, to- Troy checked Tony's breasts. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> He's very in tune today. Yes, he is. <laughs> so Huck is having a ball, man. He's playing video games with Javi, and he's having a great time with that. And Javi wants to hang after school, and Huck says, yeah, okay. Well, Because Javi thinks he's playing with another kid, or, or does he? We'll find out later. Now, Olivia goes to see Abby, who for some reason is, is like under her desk or behind her desk, down on the floor. Apparently, after Abby found out that Chip, her ex-husband, who used to beat the crap out of her, was the president's nominee to replace this uh, this the senator diaper man. Uh, after she found out, she went to the bathroom and she threw up, and she threw up all over her dress. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, yes. She says, you know, she wants to cry. Abby, um, Olivia says, cry. She goes, no, press secretaries can't cry. It's like a rule. And Olivia uh, asked Abby, you cry, if you cried, you wouldn't have thrown up. See, that's the thing. It's you better to both. You can't do both, man. Do it's one better to cry than to throw up on your dress. Well, that's I would cry. True. Yeah, yeah. That's I'm true. glad Olivia didn't have to pull out that one face she does that would fit perfectly. Like if if Abby's breath was stinking, that one face Olivia does that huh, it would have been it would have worked. But she didn't. <laughs> she didn't use it. She was a friend. Yeah. Because <laughs> you know how it is. That after throw up breath is bad. Man, <laughs> Olivia asked Abby, "What do you want?" In other, in other words, who do you want me to pope? Who, who do you want me to pope? That's right. You know, and Abby says, "You can't handle this." And Olivia says, "Watch me." So Olivia's, I, I guess they have mended fences. It's pretty obvious. I think last week that they're 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 friends again, and Olivia's there for Abby. Abby's there for Olivia, and Olivia wants to do something about it, but Abby doesn't think that anything can be done because. You know, he's been endorsed by the president. Mm-hmm. So Olivia's thinking, well, whoever's going to run against him, you know, because Olivia, Bo- this woman, Susan Ross, she bogarts Susan Ross's campaign office. She goes right in there uh, and she wants to run Susan Ross's campaign. She tells her free of charge. <laughs> you know, and she goes in there. She goes in there hard, man. And she, yeah. you know, take that sign down. She said she takes snatch some phone out of some girl's hands and says, You get it back when you finish doing what I told you to do and you know. I think that could work in real life. <laughs> I think people I think somebody I don't know where I, you know, somebody could actually pull that off. You know, just walk into a place, you know. Right. This pizza is not at the right temperature. I'm gonna need you to take it back and let's get another one out here. And then we're offering fifty percent off you know, just like go could, yeah. Somebody could pull that off, man. Nowadays, because people don't pay attention anymore. When she took the girl's phone, she was kind of had that stunned look, like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> you know. Wait a minute. What was that? What was that look again, man? What? <laughs> <laughs> also, because Olivia's hair was snatched. Yeah. It was- Hair was lit. That feather was right. You know, yeah. I think that seduced them all. They were like, "Wow!" Yeah, yeah. You got your fair faucet on, damn. Yeah. <laughs> fair faucet, damn. Feather up, sexy, sexy shot. Olivia wants to make a couple of tweaks to Susan Ross's look. She calls it a couple of tweaks. I think it's more than that. Uh, they need some dirt on Chip without using the fact that he used to beat Abby. So they're looking for something else. But when they were tweaking Susan Ross's look, they had to wax the mustache, they had to redo the hair, you know, they had to give her facial, they had to do a lot of things to get her just to look more soft. You the unibrow. unibrow. The unibrow. unibrow. <laughs> shrek, shrek. Had to take that, that unibrow. Al be sure. She had yeah. that Al be sure going. <laughs> Al be sure. So Liz goes to talk to Melly about how Melly can help shape foreign policy. So Liz is going back to the well. You know, last week, she talked, you know, when uh, Bitsy was on last week, and Liz kind of put the, the bug in the ear about the closing of, of uh, some Army bases and stuff, and then Melly came out later on and spoke on that when Melly decided she was going to be more like Bitsy. Right. Don't we all want to be more like Bitsy? I do. <laughs> yeah. So Liz goes back to talk to Melly about how, how Melly can, can help do that. And, and they leave that right there. But Olivia calls David because Olivia wants to get into Supermax, the prison. And, uh, you know, David's like, no, that place, you know, that place holds people who eat people, you know. 
<laughs> David no, had it. He did have some good that. lines. He had some yes. good lines. He did have some good lines. He says that he one, after, What did he say? This is not a prisonmeat.com or whatever. That was a great line. Yeah. Prisonmingle.com. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I've been poked and I don't know it. Is what he wants to know. Uh, who said it was Jake that I wanted to visit? Because he's assuming that she wants to see Jake. So he, she says, I, I, I didn't say that. She wants to see Secret Service Tom is what she wants to do. Mm. This is where it starts to get really interesting because she meets him in the warden's office, which is off the book. So there's no paper trail of her actually going there to visit Tom because it's in, his, in the warden's office and she didn't have to sign in. So Tom is sitting there meeting with Olivia and he looks at Olivia and he says, you know, I've never really looked at you. And you are beautiful. Who ordered you to kill the president? Huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> Who ordered you to kill the president's son? Is what Olivia says. You know, and 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 Tom's like, well, why did you leave him? Why did why did you leave the president? Because you have so much power over him. You know, and they, they go back and forth with that. And then he tells her, you know, your father. They talk. They start talking about Eli Pope. She said he tells her, you don't have a father. You have command. You don't have a you don't have a daddy. You got command, you know. Tom flipped the script on her. She came in as normal in her white coat, like, "Tell me all that you know. Give yeah. me the answers." Yeah. Didn't you see what I did at that campaign office? Yep. <laughs> yep. And Tom just is like, "Look, uh, you know, you why? What's up with you? What's yeah. going on over with you?" Yeah. And uh, and kind of shut her down for for a minute. For a minute, because, I mean, he even told Olivia that Fitz went to her apartment while she was gone, and he made some kind of noise. She, he says it wasn't a, it, he wasn't crying, but it was some kind of noise, and it concerned him. But he also told Olivia, I could never protect the president from you. I could protect him from everything, except that bullet he took in the second season. But, you know, but he kept, tells her again, you are beautiful. You are Helen of Troy. They all love you. Who ordered you to to to, uh, to kill the president's son? And he says Jake Ballard. Uh, man. So he so sticks to the so story far. that command that Eli Pope told him to stick with that Jake ordered the killing of uh, Jerry Grant, the president's son. Yeah. He was trained. Yep. Yeah. And that noise was the was kind of the it was the same noise that Bernie Mac made in in uh, Kings of Comedy. <laughs> the exact same noise unidentifiable not sure what happened but it was a noise it was frightening what, what was that noise again <laughs> <laughs> so also, Susan, Tom, Tom didn't share that the president was smelling her couch too well you know what <laughs> And I think we all benefited from that, holding back that little nugget. Thank you very much. So, so, so Olivia's back with Susan Ross, who's going to run against Chip for the Virginia Senate seat, trying to do a political ad. But Susan is blinking too much, and then she, he, uh, Olivia tells Susan, don't blink so much. So now Susan's reading the copy on, she's like this, right? She's like... <laughs> And uh, they turn around and see Huck playing with uh, Susan's daughter, and they, you know, light goes off in their head, and they decide to have the little daughter uh, do the spot. And the spot it was a great commercial. It was, it a, was a great spot. spot for Susan Ross's campaign. And, and six hours after it was released, it went viral. You know, if the Democrats had this this past Tuesday, <laughs> <laughs> she, that kid right. could have cut all the ads. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would have been helpful. Yep. Well. <clears throat> So after a long day's work, Abby's leaving and she's in the parking garage and she's walking to her car and Chip catches Abby in the parking lot and he wants to kiss and make up, you know, and, uh, you know, he's talking that noise and stuff and she clearly is terrified of him and she opens her car door and she's bent over reaching for something. He's like checking out the view and then she comes back with a gun, man. She, she, she She's ready to come out of a bag on him, man. <laughs> yes. You know, I'm about 45. I want you to listen to. <laughs> I mean, she was ready to kill him in his in it, right there, right there in that spot. She was going. I got a glockenspiel. I want you to hear. <laughs> <laughs> so we punish the spiel. <laughs> <laughs> so she does not shoot him, but she does go and see Olivia, and Olivia takes the gun from Abby. 
And Olivia and wants Abby to tell her. Abby had the gun like for a 40 minute drive, walking in the building, on the elevator, on the escalator. The gun was still in her hand. <laughs> Nobody Give me the gun, Abby. Give me the gun. Give me the gun. She ordered a hamburger. She had the gun in her hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. She ordered it animal style, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I said animal so, style. <laughs> Turn to the side, animal style. <laughs> Only. Olivia takes the gun. She wants Abby to tell the world her story. This and Abby the, says, women, women who tell their story, like Anita <laughs> Hill and Monica Lewinsky, where, where are they now? That's a great Shana, that's a great, that's a great Shana Rimes, Shana Rimes pissed them off. They were both in their panties eating Cheetos watching the show. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Ooh, man. Hey, he's on the rise. <laughs> you gotta bring me up, right? You gotta bring me into this. Yeah. You know, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was gonna say, although Olivia was right, she was, you know, she was on her white horse making a good point. Yeah. Yes. You can change the conversation. Abby was like, "Come on now." <laughs> I will be an afterthought, a pimple yeah. on on history's ass. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. So Fitz calls Olivia and tells her that Jake is eating 2,700 calories a day. And he's exercising. He's fine. Olivia tells Fitz, I want to see Tom. Olivia knows Fitz tried to kill himself because Tom told her. I didn't know she didn't know that. But until until Tom told her. Tom told her, you know, that, that Fitz tried to kill himself. But I, I always thought that Olivia knew early on. But I guess not. You, you assume, Tony. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, Fitz asked her about this hope thing. Do we, st we still have hope? Well, where are we with this? Hope? Were you lying when you said there's still hope? And she <laughs> says, I don't lie. And he says, well, then come over here and prove it. And Fair then enough. Fitz starts to tell her what he would do to her. Yeah. You know, including, um, uh, including, uh, you know, you will taste, you will find, well, how did he say you would taste? <laughs> you know what he you, said, Tony. You will know what you taste like or something? I don't so, know what that is. I'm going to kiss you in the mouth and you'll taste yourself. You'll be able yeah. to taste yourself. Yeah. He said, he said, starting from the bottom, now we're here. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll be able to taste yourself. I think he said, actually, I'm starting from your bottom. Now we're here. Started from your bottom, now we're here. <laughs> and, and Olivia was like, Oh, Lord, I'm getting hot. But then again, I do have a wool coat on. <laughs> As usual. You know, and she starts unbuttoning. And she, starts, she, she starts unbuttoning, man. It's like it's going to be some kind of some kind of thing, man, over man, the phone. All them buttons. We, we, we have never seen the end of that. <laughs> then, then he hung up on her. I mean, he straight he straight played her on that, though. Let's let's call it yes. what it is, man. He, yes. he reeled her in, and then he dropped her. But Tony... On that scene, many notes were taken across the country. Many <laughs> rewinds. Oh, that's going to be used from, from now on. You just heard on national TV, I'm going to come up there and give you a kiss on your mouth and let you taste yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you saw on TV. I hope the kids were asleep. Yeah. Well, and I, I like to see, I love this because the older demographic, the older sisters, they're like, <laughs> And then the young, you know, the young girls are like, and, and you know, and so, <laughs> you know, the young, young freaks don't even, but the older, the older like a fifty-three-year-old, like, no, you really? man. Also, with the thing, the power of the power of phone play, it's like it only works when somebody is really into you. Yeah, because if they're not into you, it sounds ridiculous. <laughs> Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Great. Look. Um. You know. Versus. <laughs> yeah. And then what? You know. It's kind of. <laughs> right. You gotta be the right person. So don't everybody try this. Know your position. Okay. Right. Don't try. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And then she, she, she apparently uh, clearly was worked up, man, because she's just like, ah. <laughs> what, yes. what was that, that was, man? <laughs> that's where you're supposed to be grabbing them keys. That's it. Yeah, that's and it. That was on her couch or on her bed. She was sitting on the edge of the bed, I thought. Yeah. With a coat on? Well, she just had just walked in, mm -hmm. and she went in her bedroom. Maybe she was getting ready to take off her her, uh, her coat when the phone rang. Oh, come on. Y'all don't know why the, she had the coat on. The fall collection at Macy's. Come 
gotta sell you know these what? coats, man. There, there was a lot of interaction on Twitter last night because I follow Kerry Washington on Twitter, and people were asking her about that coat. Yes. You know, and apparently it's a Prada coat or something. It, I don't know what the deal is on that. So we go to commercial break. We come back. Huck is at the uh, arcade to meet Javi, but he keeps his distance. He's not gonna. He's not gonna go up to Javi because he'll come up looking like a perv because he thinks that Javi doesn't even know who he is. So he kind of just watches him for a while. Watches That's the Huck I know. Game. Go huh? someplace. That's the Huck I know. Go someplace <laughs> with intuitive action and then not do it. <laughs> As, go ahead. Well, Huck. <laughs> I think also Huck's a great example of how it's all about context when you're talking about a grown person and a kid. Yeah. If you didn't, if we did not, if we did not know the storyline yeah. and we just saw the scenes, we'd be like, "What is wrong with this dude right here?" First a little girl, not a little boy. And then the last, only problem that is a problem, though, is I don't want my son uh, just going to some arcade meeting some random people. <laughs> Period. Kid or not. That's kind of yeah. scary, actually. That was kind of scary. Yeah. That was kind of scary. So Cyrus is told. Early on in the episode, there was uh, something, a shooting, a mass, some kind of thing happened in Angola outside the U.S. Embassy. And something was said, and Cyrus starts to wonder how this information got out and did his new lover, his new boy toy, Michael, did Michael say something to somebody? So he starts to wonder. So he has one of his uh, minions go through some transcripts and stuff to find out (laughs) if Liz said anything about Angola. And he kind of come to find out that this person who looked into it says, no, she hasn't said anything about Angola. So he's relieved in a way, you can see the smile on his face because now, you know, he can go back to loving on this man that he's in love with, right? right. So he tells the dude, take the rest of the day off. And the dude's like, you mean take the rest of the day off like I'm fired? <laughs> yeah. So clearly that guy has been threatened many times. But uh, that was that about, was and what about Cyrus? Me. Cyrus is good up to Cyrus' libido. Damn, yeah. Cyrus be getting it in, don't he? Back with a vengeance. <laughs> So Susan Ross, though, the woman running for the Senate seat in Virginia against Abby's ex, Chip, uh, as it turns out, was not married to her daughter's father. And Leo comes to tell Abby this information, you know, and uh, Abby tells Leo what Chip did to her. You know, jaw wired shut, two uh, new front teeth, and a collarbone that hurts every time it's getting ready to rain. Mm -hmm. Yahtzee. Yahtzee Yahtzee was the key word in that conversation. (laughs) Right. Because Leo said Yahtzee when he told Abby that Susan Ross was never married. And with the Republican base, that's immoral to have a child and not be married. And uh, that's when Abby tells Leo what Chip did to her. And it's important that she did tell Leo this because Leo was running Chip's campaign. Right. Uh, you know, so Eli knows that Olivia went to see Tom. Eli's <laughs> waiting for Olivia at her apartment. And Olivia tells Eli, go home, Dad. And he just loses it, man. You do not disrespect me. <laughs> Ever. You know? And then here's we get the we get the weekly Eli Pope soliloquy right here, right? This is the weekly one that we get. When I when I strike, he says it's precise and it's for a reason. He tells Olivia, his daughter, you never choose one of them over me. Ooh, one of them. Wait a minute. One of them. One of them. I spent a lifetime yep. shining their shoes. Right. So you could see your reflection. <laughs> <laughs> we were done, Troy. <laughs> What's funny is the black the black man the black father in you when we, when he talks, you do kinda listen. Yeah. You'd be like, okay, yeah, yeah. I have daughters. Okay. <laughs> you're crazy, but okay, but you're crazy. Mm-hmm. But that was but you know what? Wh- me... While right. he's telling her this she has a look on her face that I don't ever remember seeing. And it wasn't a look of fear. It wasn't a look of sadness. It wasn't the look of horror. It was a look of, I got your ass. All right? That's right. That's I, I right. get it now. And now you are messing with the wrong one. Right? Mm-hmm. This, I mean, that was the look she had on her face. Mm-hmm. And she told him, you wasted a lifetime doing all the wrong things. Damn. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> That's what I said. Damn. This is the point where... If I had some popcorn, I would have been eating it at that point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, you knew it was coming. That look. Woo! That was a that was that was I mean, that wasn't a mean mug. That wasn't the side eye. That was like what? 
<laughs> That's what but, that but I will say she did have an advantage. That was a badass coat. That was a badass <laughs> coat, dude. That was a badass coat, man. She had, ooh, that was white. Oh, I'm going to have to get the right to that one. That was a badass coat. Well, you you know, she knew she was looking right. She was like, yeah. Man. You know what? You could probably find it in New York quicker than I can find it in St. Louis. Let's figure that because that was I wanted the coat. I was that's a badass coat right there. If if I ever had a conversation with my father, yeah, huh? I would have said that. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you would have that coat on too. Eli oh, tells you. Eli you tells you. Whole... <laughs> you spent your whole life. Uh, yeah, I don't paying know. Off, you What's your name? You, sp- you spent your whole life paying off that coat, is what you did. <laughs> and Eli tells her, "Against me, you will lose." Mm-hmm. So he's trying to intimidate her clearly, right? But that look on her face tells the story that I'm no longer intimidated by you. I know how to play your game, right? right? That, that, that's the that's the look. I mean, because like I said, I'd never seen that look on her face before. And you, you know, know what? This is a show of face looks. If you can't do your face right, you cannot be on this show. <laughs> <laughs> you only have to hear the script. You can look at people's faces and know what the hell is going on in every scene. <laughs> so we're, we're we we fast forward Tom's uh, Tom's jail cell. Uh, all of a sudden, door opens. Bunk inspection. Mm-hmm. And the and the guard says, "I got a message from command." And then he just shanks the hell out of Tom stab. several times. Stab, stab, stab. Ow. I mean, he went. He, I mean, it was repeatedly, repeatedly done. Uh, you know, to the abdomen. Mm-hmm. You know, and then Tom drops, and he uh, the guard walks out and leaves him there. Yeah. You know. He said, he said "What did the hand say to Tom? Shank, shank, shank. <laughs> shank, shank, shank. <laughs> shank, shank, shank. <laughs> shank your belly. Shank your belly. <laughs> Quit it, Huck. Quinn, Quinn and Huck finally decide to tell Olivia that she's being targeted. They decide to tell her about this folder with all these pictures of her that they found that apparently the young Caitlin had taken, and it ended up costing her her life. Mm-hmm. And Huck says, you know, because uh, Olivia's like, well, why didn't anybody tell me? And he took the fall for that. Because, I mean, he did tell Quinn, don't say anything yet. Yeah. Don't say anything yet. So, so Melly is talking about White House dinners with a reporter, and then she starts talking about foreign policy. Right, uh, Cyrus and Michael are watching on TV now. Early on, when this Angola thing happened, Cyrus told Michael that they were going to send in the USS Roosevelt, mm-hmm. but they were not sending. In, I don't even know if there is a USS Roosevelt, but but they made one up. But but I mean, they sent the USS Roosevelt. I'm sure there is a USS Roosevelt, but uh, Melly mentions the USS Roosevelt on TV when they were they were sending in what the USS Truman. Truman, okay. And they so, got, uh, the USS Obama was on hold. <laughs> so so Me- Melly mentions black, the USS it's a black ship. <laughs> Melly mentions the USS Roosevelt, and then Cyrus has this Florida Evans look on him. Damn, damn, damn! Man. Because now he knows. He knows. And the sad part was he had the coffee to wash the taste of himself off his mouth, so he was like, "Oh, damn!" You know. Michael went to get Cyrus some coffee. And he climbed back. <laughs> Give me a coffee. Hey, give me a coffee. Kind of Michael, cl- Michael climbs back in the bed with Cyrus and says, I know all your weaknesses, Cy. And Cyrus he said, said, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> you sure do. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go. Gotta go. Gotta go. Man, is this Keurig? Man. <laughs> so, what, what, so what do you know, sir? The problem, you know, we are open-minded, and we, we love, we have friends that are gay, we love gay situations. This is what my only beef is, when you saw Mike lay on Cyrus's chest, <laughs> I think he was caving it in. I mean, you know, that's a, big, that's a, <laughs> that's a big young man, and you're an old man. I don't know if his body can handle that. He's like, <laughs> kind of that cut. Oh, geez. Geez. That's why I needed a coffee, man. A little, a little pick me up. So what do you think is going to happen to Michael? Oh, you know what's going to happen. I mean, is, is, is Cyrus, is Charlie still available? I guess he is, because that, that was Cyrus's go-to guy when he wanted something, you know, sinister to happen to one individual. He would go to Charlie. Oh, he won't, you know, he's going to milk him. For, he's, gonna, he's, gonna, he's getting to your girl. For. He's going to run? He's going to 
use him yes. to get to his girl. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, he already milked him. He was going to use him <laughs> to get... Hey, give, me give me a coffee. Give me a coffee. Give me a coffee. So Leo goes back to Abby and tells Abby that Chip withdrew his name. Uh, Chip admitted to setting up Diaper Boy. You know, the, the senator that resigned. And uh, Leo, after Abby told Leo what Chip did to her when they were married, I think Leo's the one who probably told Chip, "You, you need to, you need to step down because I, I know, I know the truth. I know what you did to Abby. This is gonna come out. You need to let this go. You need to withdraw your name from any consideration to be the senator from Virginia." I'm pretty sure that's what Leo told Chip. Mm-hmm. Because he also said, "Because I'm about to hit that." I think he said that. <laughs> you know what? And and Leo kissed Abby. He had a bourbon and kiss. The bourbon kid. I, I thought about you, Troy. Was that old granddad? Where did he roll? Where did he go with, man? They had some uh, Kentucky bourbon. Kentucky okay. bourbon. Mm -hmm. I thought it was, I, at first, you know what I thought it was? That brass monkey. <laughs> that, funky that funky monkey. monkey. Brass yes. monkey. <laughs> <laughs> funky monkey is code for a kiss after you've been drinking bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> and funky monkey is something you don't want to hear. You know what I'm saying. Anyway. <laughs> Fitz and Melly. Fitz and Melly. <laughs> I guess not here. Or in the in the Oval Office? No. <laughs> yes. Oh man. That was, that was yet another name when, when Melly was off the chain. Yeah. <laughs> smelly, 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 man. <clears throat> a, a, a funky monkey is never appropriate in any situation. Mm, no, no. No, it's a not, bit of bar. Not even at the zoo. <laughs> so, Fitz and Melly are on the balcony and they're talking about Angola. <laughs> Fitz is telling Melly, you got to stay out of my business when it comes to this, this, this foreign policy, this official presidential stuff. You got right. to, you got to, don't stop, quit doing that. <laughs> stop, stop that. Stop it. And then Fitz's phone rings mm -hmm. and he doesn't <laughs> want to answer it. Damn. But, but, but so Melly does and guess who it is? It's Olivia Pope. And then Melly gives Fitz the phone and she gives him the nostril of disgust. You know, the, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yes. and, 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 uh, Olivia goes to see. Uh, By the Tom. way, though, Olivia didn't give a damn, did she? Yeah, I want to speak of Fitz. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what, the, and what's, what I learned about the scene was, you forget that this dude is married. <laughs> you know, like, you're like, we're all having fun. We're all, you're like, oh, damn. Damn. <laughs> damn, he's <is> married. <laughs> I forgot. Sorry. After trying to give somebody a check down, trying to give his wife a check down about what yeah. she's doing. Oh, here's your phone. It's Olivia. <laughs> <laughs> <Ass. Hey. laughs> so, so Olivia goes to see Tom, who's in the hospital recovering from the shanking that he got. Mm -hmm. And Tom finally tells Olivia that it was Command who ordered the killing of the president's son. And I guess, and Harrison. Was Harrison like a throw in? I think Harrison's still a play. I think Harrison's coming back. Yeah, I do too. Uh, I, I do too. So, but, she but, but that last piece of information, though, was that was like that's what I think set it all off, though, right? What he said yeah. that also Harrison said, uh, what do he say? I'm gonna blank now. He said, Oh, because oh, he said what command said, yeah, if, if, if he's gonna take my child, I'm gonna take his child, right? Right, right, and so he, he but he, he put those he put those words in the mouth of Harrison, right? Right, right, <laughs> so it was like, What? Okay, so that's, that's going to get somebody killed right there. Well, Olivia records her conversation with Tom, admitting that it was actually Command who ordered the killings. And she plays it for Fitz. And Fitz says, why did Tom conf confess? And Olivia tells him, he's a B613 agent. I handled him. Mm, God. Yeah. So now she's, now she's Command Junior. She got a little dad up in her. She got some she dad up in her. Look at that. You know? And we come to find out that the guard who shanked Tom was paid by Quinn, by OPA, 
to shank Tom, but not to kill him. Because he didn't, I mean, as many times as he got shanked, you would have th thought he would have bled out, man. I mean, he got he yeah. got shanked, you know, several times, but he didn't die. So yeah. I, so in my mind, I'm thinking the guard shanked him several times, but not really, to, but didn't kill him. It was overacting, Tony. It was just a good scene. They decided to put it in the show. Well, <laughs> you know what? You shanked him 79 times, but the facial expressions were good. Let's, let's print that. <laughs> so we switched to another scene. Javi had apparently has, has uh, he has hucked Huck. Yeah. And he has tracked Huck down. He tells him, I tracked you down by your IP address. Mm -hmm. Now, did Huck do that on purpose? Because Huck, Huck is a computer whiz, man. How could he be that careless by leaving his IP address open. Did he do that on purpose? Or he assumed that his child wouldn't be that adept. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he seemed genuinely shocked to see his son. Um, and he tell, and, and, and Javi knows that Huck is his dad. Yeah, I know. Well, well Javi, was, Javi was glad because he thought his dad was Frederick Douglass based on those pictures. <laughs> 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 that, is, that is true. Uh, <laughs> I think we covered that in one of our first episodes, man. So my, my daddy, my daddy singing the Tavares. <laughs> <laughs> the Tavares. <laughs> you got a baby. <laughs> Fitz and Olivia decide to go see Jake. Mm -hmm. And apparently and now, now, now apparently, huh, what was that, Troy? Well, they brought Jake to the uh, situation yeah. room. To the situation room, right, right, yeah. right, yeah. and apparently now it, it's it's they're all going to join forces to go after Eli, go after Command. Mm -hmm. This is this is where uh, last night's episode ends. Is the three of them uh, in a room, and it doesn't look like it's going to be con confrontational. In fact, Jake's like got this look on his face, like, "What the hell, y'all get ready to do to me now?" I hope it's not a threesome. Well, you all off. <laughs> no, no, I don't. I don't think that was on the table. <laughs> so <laughs> there's gonna be some conflict later on, though. There is gonna be some conflict later hey, on. Hey guys, we won. Now yeah. what do we get? <laughs> <laughs> Fitz is like, well, I got hope. <laughs> Jake, Jake's like, well, I got Pope. So, <laughs> <you know>? <laughs> <laughs> so, so the episode ends there, man. What did I miss? Tony, you're spot on again. Tony, week by week, just. Did doesn't miss a beat. Well, a beat. give this man a job. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. Listen, listen, listen to Mark, somebody, please. Yeah. So uh, I guess we'll see what happens next week, though. It was a it was a great episode. There was lots of great one-liners in this episode. David Rosen, the way he the way Joshua Molina delivers those lines as Dave, as David Rosen is is a, is a, is a skill. It's a skill set not many people have. No, that's true. You know, and get, I'm giving Tom. Tom gets the brew baker today because Tom. Tom had his uh, command moment. You know, yeah. when he delivered his lines. You know, he was breaking down command. I thought that was good because I really hadn't seen that side. I mean, he's just mainly a killing machine. He yeah. sounded like Rowan though, too. <laughs> that's true. I apparently you have to talk like this <laughs> when you're in command. Well. <laughs> That's kind of Shat that's kind of Shatnerish. Yeah, that's that was gonna say that's Captain Kirkish. Yeah, a little bit. And also Olivia's wardrobe and hair, flawless. She woke up like this. <laughs> <laughs> I never noticed I never noticed Abby had that uh deal right here before. Little Abraham Lincoln? Yeah, I didn't notice. Hers is like hers is colorless though. It's not it's, it's not a little, you know, not a little mold. It's a mold, but it's colorless. But I didn't notice before. Sorry. A colorless mold. Nobody really cares about that, I guess. That'll right? be that'll be the name of the next episode, a colorless mold. Hmm. Also, I thought it was interesting. Normally, they do a bigger buildup for the title, like they gave it to us right off the rip this time, right? Normally, yeah, usually, usually you got to you, you find out uh, at least thirty minutes in. Yeah, you kind of get the yeah. man. You got to get that out of the way once once people start dropping deuces and in, in diapers. <laughs> <laughs> diapers. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> and they did not revisit the diaper either. They let that go. Okay, that's uh, enough. Dropping, dropping deuces and diapers. That's. See, that's, I like that actually. That's that's. That's going to be part of the title of our episode today. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there you go. That's your men on scandal this week. The episode called. 
Baby made a mess. There you go. <laughs> oh, oh, I threw the alley oop up there, man. Nobody got nobody grabbed it, man. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Was... <clears throat> we appreciate you watching. Uh, if you can share this, that'd be great. Repost it. Uh, a lot of positive feedback. Still, people still actually people left. Uh, one lady left a message. Want to know where the hell Mark's been? Mm -hmm. And can yeah. we still say Mark is part of this if he hasn't been on? I was like, well, yeah. I mean, of course. Like, what do you, what do you mean? I'm trying to just do or die, baby. This is, this is the, we're doing this. People, take, people taking attendance on this yeah. show. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's see. Uh, okay, there's Tony, Troy, oh, Mark, absent. <laughs> right. As you can see, I, mean, my, I found my palatial estate to be able to do it, so we're, we're fine. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. We're good. So appreciate you watching so much. All right, we'll uh, talk to you next week. That's uh, Mark Clark in New York. Troy Johnson in Washington, D.C. I'm Tony Scott in St. Louis. I look forward to next week for another Men on Scandal. And don't forget Men on Everything. That's right. Men on Everything is our, is our other program. Let's put us on everything like a hot dog.